Hey, I'm Chris. And I'm Natalie. And we're somewhere south of Minnesota. So here's our rig. Most RVers name their rigs, and we've named ours. The truck is Mork, and the RV is Mindy. That's right, Mork and Mindy. But unlike the TV show, Mindy is a big girl. Mork is a 2004 Ford F-350 diesel dually with an eight-foot bed. This is ideal for towing a fifth wheel. We got a pretty good deal on Mork because of his age, but we ended up spending a lot to make him tow worthy. Things like a brand new transmission, water pump, new tires, but enough about Mork. Let's start the tour. This is Mindy. She's a 2019 Columbus Palomino made by Forest River. It's the F377 MBC model which means she has the mid-bunk floor plan. She's 42 feet long, 12 and a half feet tall, and over eight feet wide. Now, there's nothing real special about Mindy. In fact, I'd say she's probably in the mid-range as far as fifth wheels go. I've seen a lot of less expensive models, but I've seen a bunch of fifth wheels that are a lot more expensive especially the ones that are specifically designed for full-time living. When they designed Mindy, I don't think they really had full-time living in mind. But this is our home, and we do live in it full-time, and we really do love her. I'm going to start this tour on the outside, and later on in the video, we'll check out the inside. But as we go around the outside, I'm going to be throwing in a few inside shots to help show how the floor plan works. We'll start with what we call the dining room slide. If you walk inside and turn to the left, you're going to enter the living area. This consists of the kitchen, the dining room, and the living room. The reason we call this slide the dining room slide is because the dining room is located inside the slide right in front of this large window. Under the smaller window are two recliners or what some people call theater seating. Now if you walk into the RV and turn to your right you'll head upstairs. The reason we call the front part of the RV the upstairs is because there are three steps that you have to climb located just before this window. As you head up the hallway, you'll find the bathroom. It's located across from this window here. And if you continue towards the front, you'll end up in the master bedroom that has this lovely large window. This big door down here opens to a large pass-through storage area that we call the basement. We can store a lot in here, like our grill, fire pit, tools, and typically all the things we use outside. The grill's all muddy because we just had a bunch of rain, but that's okay. The basement is really easy to clean. Speaking of cleaning, Here's the heart of our central vac system. It really makes cleaning the inside of the RV a breeze. And you can hook the hose up here and vacuum the basement, or even the truck. Above that are some connections for satellite and cable, and an electrical outlet. The outside radio is located conveniently way back here. It plays out of two speakers that are located under the awning. And it's Bluetooth, so we can play music right from our phones. This is the battery disconnect switch. And it's a really bad place for it. If we flip this switch, it cuts the power from the batteries to the RV. Sometimes things in the basement will slide around when we're traveling and accidentally flip this switch. The first time it happened, it took us a while to figure out why we didn't have any battery power. Up in the very front of the RV is another storage area. 
We just call it the patio storage. On the very bottom is where we store our LED lights and driveway sensors that we use for gate guarding. Other than that, all we store in here is the patio. So that's three large folding chairs, a small table, a large folded patio mat, and a tall step stool that we use around the outside of the RV. It's a tight fit, but it all fits in here, nice and snug. And that's important because on the right you can see our batteries and the hydraulics for the leveling system. We don't want stuff sliding around in here and banging into those. Now let's check out the back side of the RV. At the front, there's a small door. You probably noticed this same door on the other side too. This is where our propane tanks are located. There's one on each side of the RV. These are pretty big tanks and it's really a pain getting them in and out of here. Luckily, we don't have to fill them very often, unless it's cold out. Running the furnace empties these tanks real quick. Now the next door gives us access to the other side of the basement. This large purple tub is where we keep everything we need for our water supply. Hoses, filters, and various connectors and fittings. In the empty space is usually where we keep a brown tub that we use exclusively to store the sewer hose. When the sewer hose is in use, we just store that tub under the RV. On the front wall is the inverter that runs our residential refrigerator whenever we're on battery power or traveling. On the back wall is a solar controller for the solar panels that are up on the roof. On the inside of the door, there's a control box for the leveling system. This is where we raise and lower the front jacks when we connect or disconnect the truck. When we hit that auto level button, the RV will magically level itself in just a few minutes. We call this area the wet bay. Now I'm not going to go through every bell and whistle in here. Basically, the air, this area is where we control our water supply and maintain our sewer system. There's also a faucet in here where we can get hot water if we need it to clean things outside. All the hoses run through a hole at the bottom of the wet bay. That way we can still close and lock the basement doors. We only use the white hose for our water supply. And we only use the black hose to flush out our black tank and keep it clean. There's an electrical outlet in here and a water filtration system. But we don't really use it. It doesn't work very well. We just use bottled water to cook, drink, and brush our teeth. As we continue towards the back, behind the next panel is the water heater. Mindy came equipped with a 10 gallon quick recovery water heater that's supposed to be fantastic, but that hadn't been our experience. We could barely take a 15 minute shower or wash a sink full of dishes before the water went cold. Now about the only reason to access this panel is to service the hot water heater or to replace the anode rod. The anode rod is designed to keep the water tank from corroding and it needs to be replaced regularly. We didn't replace ours for the first nine months. So when we did finally replace it, we expected it to be really corroded, but it really wasn't that bad. So now we know we only need to replace it about once a year. We flushed the tank and checked the heating element. And while we were in here, we noticed this on and off switch. And it was actually taped into the off position. We had no idea what this switch was for. So we looked at our user manual that came with the RV. And there was nothing in there about this switch. So we looked online, and we couldn't find anything there either. Finally, we decided to just flip it on and see what happens. 
Now inside the RV is a control panel that controls all the electrical components of the RV. There are two switches for the water heater, one for the gas and one for the electric. And both these switches light up when you turn them on. I don't know about everyone else, but when I flip a switch and it lights up, I assume it's working. This was not the case. Because the switch on the outside of the water heater was turned off, the electric part wasn't working. And I think basically that's what makes the water heater quick recovery. So for nine months, we weren't using the water heater to its full potential. I think it's awful that the RV dealership didn't show us this switch during the walkthrough, or at the very least turn it on before we took delivery of the RV. Anyway, now we have an abundance of hot water. I can take a 30 minute long hot shower, dry off, and immediately go wash a sink full of dishes if I want to. There's a bunch of stuff going on under this slide. Here's the sewer connection. I'm not going to go into graphic detail about this. It's exactly what it sounds like. A large pipe where we attach a sewer hose. We put the other end of the hose into the sewer outlet at the site or dump station. You pull some levers and all the wastewater and other stuff will come rushing out through the hose and into the sewer. Now there's a bunch of tips and tricks to help you maintain the sewer system, but we'll talk about that stuff some other time. There's also a fresh water drain underneath here. Mindy has a 70 gallon fresh water tank and that's really nice when we're boondocking. It's also nice to have some water on board when we're traveling. That way we can use our own bathroom. We can flush the toilet and wash our hands, but it's not good to leave water in the tank when we're not using it because it'll get all stale and yucky. So when we know we're gonna be at a campground with hookups for a while, we can open this valve and empty the tank. See all this stuff under here that looks like mud? It's actually like a foam that the manufacturer sprays in all the openings under the RV. I think it's to help keep bugs and critters from getting inside. The galley tank lever is also very inconveniently located under this slide. When the slide is in, it's easy to access, but most of the time when we need to pull the lever, the slide is out, which means that we have to crawl under the slide and reach way back here. Usually when we get set up at a site, we'll open this valve and just leave it open, letting the water from the kitchen sink flow straight out and into the sewer. But we have to close the valve when we dump and flush the other tanks, so we still end up crawling under here quite a bit. I wish they could have put this lever in the wet bay with the other tank levers. As we continue towards the back, there's a door on the kitchen slide that gives us access to the back of the refrigerator. This tubing in here provides water for the ice maker but we keep the valve closed because we don't use the ice maker. Right now we're using bottled water to make ice until we can upgrade our filtration system. There's a vent up at the top of the kitchen slide that's really sort of a pain. Every time we set up, we have to use a step stool to climb up there and open it. Then when we're getting ready to go, we have to remember to climb back up and close it. The RV dealership told us that traveling with it open could damage it. The vent leads to a fan that's under the microwave. The fan vents out heat, smoke, odors, and humidity from cooking. If we forget to open the vent, then the fan isn't venting out anything. At the very back is the power outlet. Mindy uses 50 amps to run everything. 
we have this big heavy 30 foot 50 amp cord that we typically plug into the power pedestal at our campsite. But RV parks don't always have 50 amp sites available, so sometimes we need to use 30 amps. For this we have an adapter that fits a 30 amp outlet. We can run almost everything on 30 amps except the air conditioners. We can only run one air conditioner at a time when we're on 30 amps of power. Another power source we have is a large inverter generator that we keep in the bed of the truck. It can power everything including both air conditioners, but it's not really practical to run the generator for long periods of time. We also have two solar panels up on the roof. They charge the batteries during the day. We only have two AGM batteries and even when fully charged they only last about eight hours so just enough to get us through the night. The way our system is set up right now we can only run the refrigerator, lights, and fans on battery power. It is possible to run things like the TV, microwave, and other small appliances on battery power but we would have to upgrade our battery bank and our electrical system. The white cord you see running across here goes to our WeBoost. It's a signal booster that we got to ensure that we always have good signal for our phones and hotspots. Chris owns a transportation company in Minneapolis, so it's important for us to always stay connected. Now let's take a look at the slides on this side of the RV real quick. The first slide in the front is the bedroom slide because it's in the master bedroom. Almost half of our bed sits inside this slide. The next slide in the middle is the spare bedroom or mid bunk. This was our daughter's room when she was traveling with us. Soon my mom is going to retire and she's going to travel with us and this will be her bedroom. Right now we're just storing a few things in here. The last slide is what we call the kitchen slide because most of the kitchen is in this slide. The refrigerator, oven, microwave, and pantry all sit inside this slide. The entertainment center with the TV and fireplace is in here too. In the back, Chris installed a bike rack on the bumper. There's a ladder to get up onto the roof and there's this beautiful big window that can really offer up some spectacular views depending on where we're parked. Inside the RV the back here is where the sofa sits and it's a hide -a bed too just in case you want to come and visit. Welcome to Mount Mindy. To be honest this is not my favorite place to be. To the right is the top of the dining room slide and to the left is the top of the kitchen slide. You can see how dirt and debris collect on top of these slides. For the longest time I couldn't figure out why every time we pulled the slides out there was a bunch of dirt all over the floor. I finally figured out that it was bouncing off the top of the slides when we were traveling. Now we always come up here and sweep off the top of the slides before we pull them in. Over here is one of the air conditioners. This is the fantastic fan that's in the living area. It's got this really nice cover that protects it from wind and rain. Unfortunately it sticks to the top of the rubber roof whenever it's really hot out. So we have to come up here and unstick it all the time. You'll see a bunch of little vents up here. These two are for the oven and the galley tank. This next fan is located in the loft area. I don't think we've ever even turned it on. You have to climb way up into the loft area to reach it. Towards the front there's a TV antenna that we can turn from the inside. 
There's the skylight that's in the shower and the second fantastic fan. It's in the bathroom. This fan gets used the most and for some reason it doesn't have the nice cover on it that the other fantastic fan has. We're going to have to install one ourselves. All of the waste tanks have vents up here. This is so that the smells or gases vent up and out of the RV instead of into it. This vent is for the black tank or the toilet tank. You can really smell that it's working from up here. Gross. Now when we first bought the RV, we had the dealership install two solar panels. They help keep the batteries topped off. It's starting to look pretty dirty up here. It's probably about time for us to get up here and clean it. That's the top of the bedroom slide. We have to be real careful when we're sweeping it off because there's a lot of stuff over here that you could easily trip on. I'm not really afraid of heights, but for some reason I'm always a little nervous up here. Great views from up here though. I think it's time to get down. Just a few more things to see out here before we go inside. We have these nice moor ride steps. They're really sturdy because they're supported from the ground up. So no bouncy bouncy when we're going in and out. There's a really convenient outlet next to the door. And there's an LP quick connect for the grill if we want to use the onboard propane tanks. We've got a really large awning that covers almost the entire patio area. And there's a bunch of lights out here. Besides the LED strip light under the awning, there's a nice bright light up here in the corner. There's an amber colored light over the door. And in the front, there's a bright light that's next to the patio storage door. It's really helpful if we need to connect or disconnect from the truck at night. There are lights in all of the storage areas. One in the patio storage, one on each side of the basement, and there's even one in the wet bay. There's another bright light on the back of the RV, above the power outlet. And you might have noticed this small window up above the spare bedroom slide. This window is in the loft area. This area was designed for sleeping and it would probably be okay for kids. But I don't think a grown adult would be comfortable sleeping up here. We use it for storage and we call it the attic. Catula loves to play up here and her favorite place to sleep is in front of that window. Finally, let's take a look inside. Come on in. The first thing you see is this cabinet door. Behind this door is where all the magic happens. And a dark coat closet. It's actually a nice size coat closet for an RV, but we hardly ever wear coats anymore, so we plan to put some shelves in here for storage. Up here is where the magic happens. It's the control panel, the brains of the RV. This big switch up here is for the giant ceiling fan. I don't know why it needs a switch this big, but that's what it's for. The other switch up here is for the spare bedroom slide. The rest of the switches are on the control panel. Here's the switch for the awning. And these two control the dining room and kitchen slides. 
I never remember which one is for which. One of these days, I'll get around to labeling them. These small buttons over here are to check the batteries and holding tanks. If we press and hold a button, the red LED lights will show the level for that button. Now if we press and hold the fresh button, it sprays a wonderful air freshener throughout the entire RV, so it smells really nice inside. I'm just kidding. It's to check how much fresh water we have in the tank. The air freshener is a great idea though, don't you think? The next set of switches control the lights inside and outside, but not all the lights. You see, every slide has lights in it, and those lights can only be controlled by a switch that's in the slide. This may seem like a minor inconvenience, but when we're getting ready to go, if we've already brought in all the slides, and then realize the light is on in, say, the kitchen slide, we have to put out both the dining room and kitchen slides to reach that switch, and then bring the slides back in again. This can be really frustrating, especially if we're in a hurry. Now you might be thinking, what's the big deal if you leave a light on? It's unlikely, but it could potentially drain our batteries and then we wouldn't be able to put our jacks down when we arrive at our destination. So it's important to make sure that all the lights are off before we travel. And it would be nice if we could control all the lights from the control panel. The next set of switches light up when you turn them on. The fresh, black, and gray tanks all have heaters. If it gets really cold, we can turn on the heaters to keep any liquid in the tanks from freezing. I already talked about the water heater switches, but this little LED light is important. When we turn on the gas for the water heater, it lights up. Then we wait and watch for the light to go out. That lets us know that the pilot light is lit. If the light doesn't go out, then Houston, we have a problem. The last switch is for the water pump. We have to turn on the water pump whenever we want to use the water that's in the freshwater tank. The pump makes some noise. It's not loud, but you can definitely hear it running whenever you're using water. Now I know there's not a lot of magic happening in here, I was just trying to make a very basic control panel seem exciting. We love the living area. There's plenty of room to move around and lots of windows so you don't feel like you're sitting in a cave. I spend a lot of time in the dining room. I'm always sitting at the table working on something. There's some storage under the seats of the chairs. It's a great place to throw all sorts of odds and ends. At the end of the table, there's a leaf that pulls out, along with two matching folding chairs, in case we want to have company over for dinner. Above the table is a small corner cabinet and a nice bright light. The living room is in the very back of the RV, and there's plenty of seating. Chris likes the recliner next to the window. It's a great place to curl up with a book. And if I'm not making too much noise, he'll sometimes work out here. There's cabinets above the recliners and two lights. The sofa folds out into a bed. There's three more lights above the sofa and these cabinets are huge. We got a bunch of these large plastic bends to take advantage of all the space in these tall cabinets, but most of the bends are still empty. The nice thing is when you stack these bends, they sort of fit down inside the lids of each other, so we don't have to worry about them sliding around when we're moving. In my opinion, the end table is at the wrong end of the sofa. 
but it's there if you need a place to set a beverage or something. And there's a little bit of storage underneath. The entertainment center looks nice. There's a large TV, sound bar, and a DVD player. None of these things are high-end. In fact, they're probably some of the cheapest electronics you could buy. But we don't watch a lot of TV, so it's fine for us. Having the electric fireplace is really nice. It keeps the living room area nice and warm, and that saves us a lot on propane. But the first one stopped working halfway through the winter, and we had to have it replaced. We're hoping this one will last a little longer. There's not a dark corner anywhere inside of Mindy. There are lights everywhere. This cabinet above the TV is perfect for storing DVDs, CDs, books, and games. In the living room alone, there's so much storage, we haven't even come close to using it all. And the layout makes staying organized really easy. Now I already shared a very in-depth tour of the kitchen. It was sort of an introduction video for the cooking series that I'm working on. If you haven't seen it yet, or if you're even interested in how I organize the kitchen and how everything works, I hope you'll go watch that video. For this tour, I'm just going to touch on some of the highlights of the kitchen. Obviously, there's the big center island. It has a large double sink and a moderate amount of counter space for an RV. If we need more counter space, we can always put the sink toppers on. These are basically pieces of countertop that lay on top of the sink, essentially turning the island into one big counter. If I need even more space, we can use the area in front of the TV. That space comes in handy when we're making a big meal like Thanksgiving dinner. I hate running to the store all the time, so I really love having this big pantry. We can really stock up on food. And cats? I don't think I could live without it. The residential refrigerator is enormous. It's bigger than the fridge that we had in our house. If we were to fill it up, the food wouldn't, would spoil before we could even eat it. Chris, tell them what's behind door number one. Well, Natalie, it's a tiny bedroom. It comes with a cat and a sofa that pulls out into a bed. There's a small bunk in here too, and a decent sized window. On the other side of the room, there's a variety of cabinets. The tall cabinet is a small closet and there's a couple of small drawers. This area could easily be used as a desk. Or there's connections and a mount for a TV on the wall. Now if I could just get the cat to pay rent. This is the hallway that leads upstairs. On the bottom step is the central vacuum connection. Having a central vacuum is so convenient. This is where we plug in the long hose that can reach anywhere inside the RV. And it came with all the typical vacuum attachments. Next to the hose connection is an electric dustpan. You just flip it open with your foot, sweep the dirt in front of it, and poof, it's gone. As we head upstairs, there's a ladder tucked into the wall. It just pulls out so that we can climb up into the attic. Behind the bathroom door is a towel ring that was pre-installed. We just use it to hang a hand towel to dry our hands. One of the first things you notice when you walk into the bathroom is this oversized medicine cabinet and me in my polka dot pajamas. We can store almost everything we need in the bathroom in here. 
You just have to be careful not to bang your head on it when you're brushing your teeth. In stark contrast, there's almost no counter space. We installed a small toothbrush holder on the wall to keep those up and out of the way. The sink and toilet are both made of porcelain. And it's not your typical toilet. Most RVs have foot flush toilets. This is so cool. Check it out. I love it. I think all toilets should be foot flush. In the corner, there's some small shelves, not quite big enough for towels. I keep a few fresh washcloths and hand towels in a basket. And there's no toilet paper holder. We thought about installing one on the cabinet door across from the toilet, but we've just gotten used to it sitting on the shelf. And there's just enough room for a small wastebasket down in the corner. The shower has three large glass doors, and it's important for us to remember to lock those in place on travel days. It's a nice shower. Plenty big enough. And there's even a little place to sit down in the corner. I put up some command hooks and things to keep it from getting cluttered. Oh, and we installed this shampoo, conditioner, and body wash dispenser. In my opinion, this is a must-have in an RV shower. It even has hooks to hang your razors. Now we replaced the shower head with an aerated shower head. It's supposed to conserve on water. Yeah, it's okay. And again, there's no dark corners. If you're showering at night, there's even a bright light in here. And there's a skylight. It really helps make the shower feel taller. And we don't even need to use the lights during the day. In the very front of the RV is the master bedroom. There's just enough room in here to move around and get dressed. When we were researching RVs, one of the things we heard over and over was that even if you're buying a new RV, you're going to want to replace the mattress. Apparently, RV mattresses are usually very cheap, and they're typically a little smaller than regular mattresses, so sheets don't fit on them properly. Fortunately, Mindy came with a beautiful Serta pillow top king mattress that's true to size and it's really comfortable. In fact, even a year later, it's still as comfortable as the day we moved in. There's a small window on each side of the bed and two reading lights. The tiny end tables are awful. Not only are they way too small, but it's really easy to knock things off of them when you're getting in and out of bed. Like most RVs, the bed is on hinges and you can flip it up to access a huge storage area. They really do a good job of using every available space. There are two closets. The larger one has three sliding doors with all these little mirrors. I hate these mirrors and they're a pain to clean. This closet has three wood shelves in the back. We couldn't really afford to have a washer dryer unit installed right away. So I bought this cheap portable washer online. It actually gets the clothes really clean. It doesn't dry them, but it spins them out to the point that they're just a little damp and they line dry really fast. What I didn't know is that RV parks really frown on you hanging clothes out on a line. And a lot of them don't allow it at all. 
I can understand that, so I usually just use the laundry room at the RV park. But I'm still glad I bought it, because when we're working on the oil fields, it can be a really long drive to a laundromat, and nobody cares if we have laundry hanging out to dry. When I'm using the washer, I put it in the shower. That way it's really easy to fill and drain. We're planning to get a real washer dryer unit installed this spring. When we get that, we'll put it in this smaller closet. The water, sewer, and electrical connections are already in here. There's a nice big window in the bedroom that lets in a lot of light during the day. And there's a TV mount on the wall above the dresser, but we don't need a TV in the bedroom. Chris has his office set up on the dresser. I know the bedroom seems like a strange place to have an office, but Chris doesn't spend hours typing on a computer. In fact, he can do most of his work on his phone. All he really needs is a quiet place to talk to customers. So having his office in the bedroom has worked out really well. He just pulls a folding chair out of the closet and he's in business, literally. The dresser has four deep drawers and a cubby area. The entire bedroom is carpeted. Carpet is okay in the bedroom, I guess. But I would have preferred no carpet at all. So I hope you enjoyed the tour. You know, it was really long. It was a lot of stuff to cover, even more than I thought of when I first started working on this video. And you're probably really tired of hearing my voice, but I want to talk about just a few more things before I go. When we first bought Mindy, we had actually only physically looked at a few RVs. We had looked at RVs online and checked out a lot of different floor plans, and we knew the mid-bunk floor plan was what was probably going to be best for us. So when we went to RV dealerships, that's what we were looking for. And we did consider a toy hauler, and there were a few floor plans that had a much larger uh, bunkhouse. But those floor plans really took away from the living area. And we knew we were going to be spending a lot of time in the living area. So we really wanted that to be a nice, large, defined area. We didn't want to feel like uh, we were sitting in the kitchen when we were sitting in the living room. So when you go to these RV dealerships and you're looking at RVs that are on the lot, they have the features that the dealership has chosen for those RVs. So you might have to settle for at least a couple of things that aren't really the way you want them. For me, one of those things was the kitchen sink. I really wanted a stainless steel kitchen sink. And we loved Mindy, but she didn't have that. She had the plastic kitchen sink. And it's okay, but I know over time that it's probably going to start to get stains. It's already starting to look really dull from me scrubbing on it. One of the things that would have been a deal breaker was the plastic toilets that they sometimes have. We really wanted a porcelain toilet. So when you're looking at RVs, you definitely want to make a list of the things that you have to have and make sure that the RVs you're looking at have those things because it's really easy when you get excited and you're looking at RVs and you find the one that you think is just perfect for you to overlook something small like that if you don't have a list to double check. Now, another thing is no RV is perfect. I've heard it over and over again and Mindy is far from perfect. We love her, but she has her issues. And one of the things that we wanna do is some remodeling this spring where we really have a huge waste of space is in the back of the RV where the couch is. It's hardly ever used. We don't sit on it. The cat lays on it. I've actually slept on the Haida bed and it's not very comfortable. If any of my kids ever do come to visit us, they'd probably be just as comfortable with an air mattress on the floor 
or even better yet, because we have the Thousand Trails membership, all of these Thousand Trails parks have uh, cabins and we get a nice discount on those cabins. So they could just get one of those and have more of a vacation than staying in this cramped RV with us. So the couch has got to go, get rid of that. And then I want to move the dining room to the back of the RV. Got those three beautiful big windows back there. Be a great place to sit. And if you have a lot more room, I could get some more comfortable dining room chairs to sit in. And then with this area, I want to put a small desk. And that'll be really nice for sitting and working on video, editing, all sorts of things. And the other thing it'll be great for is when we're gate guarding. So right now, when we're at a gate, we need to watch the road for traffic coming from both directions. But when you're sitting at the table here, your back is always to one side of the road, whichever side of the table you're sitting on. So you have to constantly turn around and see if there's any traffic coming. And that gets really old over time. So if there was a nice little desk here, I'd have it this way, and then I could just see the road really easily from here. The other thing we want to replace is the theater seating. And by putting a small desk here, we're gonna save a couple of feet. I'd like to get rid of the theater seating and put in some nice, individual recliners with a table in between them and then there's one more thing that's driving me nuts and that's the window coverings so in order to make the rv look fancy they put in these beige with glitter window coverings and they're just awful the rv has no color in it it's just blah and I don't know, the shades are really nice. These blackout shades are beautiful. They work really well. But they put these panels going down the side here and these panels have hardware at the bottom that keeps these tight against the window to keep any light from leaking in. And the hardware, wherever there's a high traffic area, is coming out of the wall, like over here. This one's just flying around in the wind here because the hardware has gotten bumped and torn out of the wall. So this is sort of a bad design and we never really need it to be dark in the RV during the day. Nobody's sleeping in here. So we rarely use the blackout shades during the day other than to insulate the window from heat and they do a really good job of that. But I'm going to take this all down and just put some balance boxes up at the top to hide the hardware for the blinds. And I've seen a lot of RVs, that's our RVers add color to the decor with those. So that's my plan. We'll have to uh, look at some different colors and patterns. And I'm excited to share that with you this spring when I start doing that. So it's something to look forward to. I really appreciate you guys watching these videos, and we'll see you real soon, somewhere south of Minnesota. Bye! Katula, what are you doing up there? I'm looking for the subscribe button. Oh, I see it. Be quiet. I'm trying to sneak up on it. Steady. Got it. Oh, click that like button, too. All right and like. Great job. Hey, look over there. It's the bell icon. The bell icon. I hate bells. It's not a real bell. If you click on it, you'll get notified whenever we drop a new video. All right, I suppose. But I don't want a bell around my neck. Katula, just click the icon. Oh, all right. There. I hope you're happy. Now get that thing away from me. There better not be a bell around my neck tomorrow.